Today we're taking a look at both the full frame and APS-C cameras and comparing them to see if there's any difference between the two. Not just any APS-C, however, this is going to employ the X-T4 that uses Fuji's proprietary X-Trans sensor. That's our APS-C size X-Trans sensor with that unusual color filter that gives the camera a lot of advantages for cameras of its nature. And with that, we are comparing it with Sony's flagship, the A7R4, with the 85mm G Master, which we're going to put head to head with the 56mm APD. And we also have a 24 to 70 comparing the 16 to 55mm Fuji. Let's do it. Before we get started, take a look at both of these images. Some of them were shot on the X-T4 and some of them were shot on the A7R4 and see if you can spot the difference. So we're outside now, we're shooting some photos and we've swapped the 56mm 1.2 over to the non-APD version just so that way it's more comparable to the 85mm 1.4 G Master. So we've just swapped over the lenses. I'm now shooting the 24 to 70 on the Sony and we have the 16 to 55 on the X-T4. And I was shooting videos previously with the X-T4 actually with the 16 to 55. And now shooting videos on a Sony. One thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have a flip screen. So I can't really see it. That's something that the X-T4 does have, which is pretty cool. So we've just made it back from shooting outside both with the A7R4 and the X-T4. Um, but one thing to mention at the start of this is that the A7R4 does have a 60 megapixel sensor compared to the... Well, just a slight advantage over 26.1. <laughs> so take that uh, with what you can, but we're going to go through the images and see what the differences are, starting off with a stopping sign. As mentioned before, we shot all these photos in JPEG, so that way there's no variance with the different raw files. And taking a look at both images, they look great. But as we start to zoom in, we do notice that there is a little bit of uh, more clarity and contrast with the Sony, as well as the colors are a little bit more punchy. Yeah, but uh, we would, uh, we've stuck with the Provia setting, the standard setting on the Fujifilm. I mean, to achieve that, we probably could punch up the color by going to Velvia or the Pronic High Film Simulation. Mm. But, uh, uh, that we've just shot in the standard mode at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like a lot of this clarity and um, contrast is coming from not only the colors, but also since it does have the 60 megapixel mm. um, sensor as well. Moving on to image number two, uh, with the clock, you can definitely see that the Sony still has the edge with the, a little bit more megapixels and a little bit more clarity as we look at the clock. But you are zooming in a long way. Yeah, I mean, we are really <laughs> pixel peeping right here. We're pixel peeping a lot for full frame. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let alone for APS-C. For sure. But, uh... Next up, comparison number three, taking a look at something that I was more interested in was the actual depth of field of both a full frame versus the APS-C size sensor. And comparing both of them, uh, so we shot using a 85mm uh, G Master with the 1.4 and the 56mm uh, F1.2, yeah. Uh, and comparing them, there is a little bit of noticeable difference between the two. Uh, as you can see on the Sony, their bokeh is a little bit larger uh, it is a little bit more oval shaped as well, but um, on comparing to the Fuji, they are a little bit smaller. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. There's, um, I'm sort of regretting not taking the APD lens on that one, <laughs> but uh, ah, the, I, you know, either picture is nice. They're, both lenses uh, exhibit a very nice bokeh. Um, yeah, and do you feel like, so using the APD, what, what results would you get? I think with the, definitely with the APD, you would, uh, the, the background would, you'd probably bring it up to that sort of level of right. blurring. Yeah. Um, just looking at the pictures there, 
I don't know, I, I, maybe I'm biased, but I seem to be a little bit more, I don't know, 3D effect, if you want to call it a bit more depth on the, the Fuji one. The Sony one looks a little bit flatter, but uh, geez, you're really trying to pick something with either camera, actually, because they're, they're both, they both work so well. Mm. However, stopping down to f2 instead of the widest aperture that both these lenses can go, I feel like they are getting a little bit closer to the same look. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I definitely. You can certainly see from the, the pictures uh, that uh, the, the bokeh is it's far more similar. Um, but uh, again, geez, yeah, I wouldn't be disappointed with either camera. Mm. Moving on to comparison number four, this one actually surprised me a lot more than I expected was the dynamic range test. And we tested it uh, on a cloudy day, so we weren't able to actually get the sun involved. But taking just these two images, comparing the Sony versus the Fuji, the Sony does seem to be uh, a little bit brighter, in, especially in the shadows compared to um, the Fuji there. And in the corners, especially when we zoom in a little bit more, there is a fraction um, more clarity, uh, especially with that 60 megapixel sensor. Yeah, surprisingly though, I, I think when, when we do zoom in, uh, I'm surprised at how clear the Fuji uh, remains. I'm just still mystified by the, ex the overall exposure of the picture. Uh, um, yeah, definitely. There's some subtle differences. You see there's a bit more of the building and the light maybe. Yeah, Some for sure. Spots. Yeah, <laughs> Some no, spots. <laughs> and the, keep in mind, these were just on handheld. They weren't on a tripod or anything. So we kind of were just uh, guessing yeah. here. Um, but yeah, the, it does look like a noticeable difference, especially yeah. with the settings being the same. Bizarre. Taking a look at the final comparison, looking at just pure image quality, shooting both cameras at F8, um, right down George Street. They both look super similar. If you were to print these out, um, they would, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. No, they, it's, they are surprising. I mean, the Fuji camera, is the quality and the resolution it's putting out here is just incredible. After taking a look at all the sample images, there is a difference between full frame and APS-C. However, it's a lot smaller of a difference than I expected. With about 50% of the photos, I could probably tell which ones were which, but the other 50%, I couldn't really tell a difference between the two. And keep in mind, these all were shot in JPEG, and if we were to shoot them in RAW, we'd probably get a little bit more dynamic range. However, the full frame sensor straight out of the camera did give us a little bit more dynamic range, as well as depth of field when taking portraits. The APS-C side sensor did hold its own, however, taking some great images as well. And with the smaller form factor of the APS-C body, it may be easier for those looking to travel. And generally, APS-C size systems usually come in at a more affordable price point as well. It's my experience shooting with the Sony A7R III uh, was great. I really liked how fast the autofocus. One downside was that the lens was huge, um, and this is about the same size as the Canon one, so you're not really saving that much weight moving over to like a mirrorless system. Uh, I do like how it has a headphone jack built into the camera compared to the X-T4. I, uh, we, we have a headphone jack, look, there it is. <laughs> a detachable one. Uh, but also another downside is that it doesn't have a flip screen, which actually really helps getting like a lower angle, um, not having that kind of stuff. Hmm. I mean, uh, our adage has always been to, you know, keep the camera smaller and lighter. That's the whole concept. And one of the big advantages of having a smaller sensor, of course, your lenses be commensurately smaller as well. So, um, but uh, uh, X-Trans sort of gives us a, an advantage in this area and it's been a very interesting test comparing it against a full frame mirrorless. And of course, the full frame mirrorless has all the advantages of the mirrorless design that you're, you're gonna get. So, geez, as I said though, it's six, one and a half dozen of the other. Yeah, you know, I could find reasons to have both cameras, of course. I can't say that, can I? <laughs> I the, the Fuji film for me, I still think you know, the smaller and lighter means you're gonna use it a bit more. So wrapping it all up, it really comes down to personal preference. One thing I really like about the Fuji film is that they do have the film simulations that you're able to cycle through and really get the colors that you personally like. Um, but let us know what you think of the photos down in the comments below. The A7R 4 which is Sony's flagship full frame camera, and the X-T4, which is Fujifilm's flagship APS-C camera, both handled really well uh, comparing next to each other. Both they have uh, weather sealing, they have continuous shooting, and really great autofocus. Uh, so I think this was a really good comparison. 
Um, if you did want a little bit more uh, depth of field, then you do have to go with the larger sensor, um, whether it be full frame or, or go to a medium format like one of our GFX cameras. Yeah, and uh, we may do a comparison with that one maybe in the future. So make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now. 60 megapixels. God, that's unfair. <laughs> you never told me that. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, of course, it is 60, isn't it?